Welcome to the Raw Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today we're going to be talking about an alternative to Mediator. I know some of you are going, uh, Mediator, it's shit. Why would you want to talk about it? Well, hold up over there, right? Everybody learns about Mediator when they go through their clean code architecture journey. You know the presentations that I'm talking about. You watch them, I watch them. We all thought Mediator was the hot shit at some point. And then you try it, you use it in every single project and at some point you get tired of the classic explosion, the unneeded abstraction, and you say, I am never going to use this thing again. You put it to the side and then you don't touch it and life is good. Why on earth would I want to reintroduce Mediator as a concept just in a different flavor? If it was bad back then, how is it not going to be bad this time? Well, the alternative that we're talking about is called Wolverine. If you ever heard about MartinDB, the same people that work on that work on Wolverine. And the reason I think Wolverine is such an amazing alternative to Mediator is because Mediator itself isn't really anything amazing. The reason Wolverine is amazing is because you still get Mediator, however, at the same time you get a message bus framework. If you ever wanted to have your doors open to having a distributed system processing messages asynchronously between its services, Wolverine enables that and gives you so many tools that just make it so easy to get started as opposed to something like an service bus. So get ready, this is going to be a demo-like video. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description and you know I have a course out if you want to know C Sharp as I do it. I highly recommend you take a look at it. With that, strap in and uh, let's take a look. We have the Wolvenator project. Hopefully you can see the play in words. A .NET 7, all the good stuff. We installed Mediator, we installed Wolverine FX. This is what the package is called. If you open up your Nugget package manager, you're gonna see Wolverine over here. And this is what the logo looks like. I'm gonna obviously flash it somewhere in the video as well. Probably gonna put it in the thumbnail. But anyway, in the program CS, how you register Mediator, how you register Wolverine, you don't have to specify where these handlers are located with Wolverine. Now for actually sending messages with Mediator, you have iMediator, you send your message, you get back a response and the response uh, basically will have a type on it depending on the generic type that you specify for your I request. And then the handler basically has that as well. Wolverine, it is going to be slightly different. Now you have iMessage bus, but there are also some other interfaces as well. With the iMessage bus, because it's a asynchronous message processing service, you essentially have to specify the return type. At that point, the handler, which is going to be waiting or processing this message will be awaited. Otherwise, if you don't specify a type, that is going to be essentially a fire and forget. If we take a look at the request Wolverine, uh, I'm not sure what this request is doing here. That I request was part of Mediator and I assure you that's not something that you need here. So Wolverine advertises itself as a low ceremony framework, basically meaning you don't have any interfaces that you need to implement. You rather follow convention. The convention is you're going to have some kind of handler and then you're going to have to handle a message. And this is what Wolverine is going to look for in order to actually discover your handlers or specific messages. Okay. It is just following a naming convention. No interfaces that you need to implement just like you have in the case of Mediator. So here is them side by side. Let's open up the terminal over here. I'm just going to run the application. We have two endpoints, Mediator and Wolverine. Let's open this up. We're going to go to Mediator. We're going to get some result. If we take a look at the logs, there is nothing here. If we go to Wolverine, so execute this message gets processed. We have the result. And what Wolverine will actually do is because it is meant to be working with queues or with some kind of connections, it is going to have some kind of level of logging. So you can actually see messages being processed. Okay, so that's essentially Wolverine's weak form. It's just behaving like mediator. Let's take a look at its next form, which is it opening doors for you to be a message bus, giving you the capability to build a distributed message processing systems. I'll close everything. We're gonna open up this ping ponger. So first of all, we will have a shared project, which is essentially messages and these are just two messages so two pieces of data that we can pass around in the pinger this is the thing that is going to emit a ping and then the ponger is going to pong back so ping pong ping pong okay hopefully you get the concept over here 
Pinger in a, is an ASP.NET Core application. Here we use Wolverine. We're listening on port 8010. And here we're not going to be using some kind of cloud queue, although we, were, we will get to that. Here we will just listen on a TCP port. So we're listening over here. And then for this specific message, we're going to be publishing it to this target. We then have an endpoint where we're using the message bus to publish a message. So we're going to publish ping and Wolverine is going to know to take that ping and send it across to somewhere else. We then have a pong handler and it's going to handle pongs. Pongs are going to be emitted by the ponger. If we take a look at the ponger, the ponger is essentially a worker service or a background service, just a service. There is no UI. It is just running in the background that is going to be listening on port 8010. So the pinger is going to send messages to 8011, sorry, and we're going to be listening to 8011. And instead of an iMessage bus, we're injecting an iMessage context. As the name implies, you have more information about the message that you're receiving, where it's coming from, etc., and also giving you the capability to essentially respond back. Even though you haven't configured the ponger to send the pongs back to 8010 for the pinger to process the messages from the 8010 port with the pong handler. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We're going to send a message. We're going to submit a ping. Ping is going to go to the ponger. It's going to process the ping message. So we're going to say got ping zero. We're going to respond with a pong. The pong is going to enter this handler. So we're going to receive some kind of pong. While the number is less than three, we're going to ping it back and so on and so forth. These two processes are going to communicate with each other. Let's open up the ponger. We're going to .NET run. We will now see that we're listening on port 8011. We will then go to the pinger. We're going to run this as well. Being an ASP.NET Core application, we can go ahead and open this up. We can then go to send, send this off, come back. And here we saw the communication happen in the background. Where on the pinger side, we'll see received pong zero, received pong one, two, and three. And then this is where it stopped. Where on the pinger side, we will see that we got ping zero, one, two, three. If you've ever worked on a distributed system, this is how things work. Essentially, one service is going to generate messages, place them on a queue for the next one to pick it up. Perhaps they will communicate with each other or messages will get passed along in a chain, emitting side effects, saving stuff to cache, to database. The stuff basically happens. So this is all fine and dandy. Who actually builds applications that communicate over TCP ports? Maybe some. But not me, uh, probably not you. You are going to be using, well, 99% of you are probably going to be using cloud. So let's take a look at this. We're going to stop this. I have especially for this tutorial for you so you can have a prime experience created myself an Amazon account. Their UI is complete ass. I hate it. I'm a Google Cloud guy. Currently, I don't have any queues. So let's go ahead and install a package. I'm going to search for Wolverine. You can see they have a RabbitMQ, Amazon. SQS and that is what I'm going to be using. So this queue, I'm going to add it to the pinger and I'm going to add it to the ponger as well. So first of all, uh, let's sort out the ponger. We're going to get rid of these two. We're going to go to the options and we're going to look for SQS. So use Amazon SQS transport. We're going to have Amazon options. So a O the main thing that I had to specify is service URL. So let's go ahead and grab that. Should look something like this. We can also have auto provision, which is going to create queues automatically. And then on the options, we will have listen to SQS queue. We're going to be processing pongs. So this is going to be pongs queue. Let's press a semicolon on the end. I don't know where that came from. And then we're going to use publish messages again. And we are going to ping to SQS queue. And this is going to be a pings dash Q semicolon on the end. Hopefully you can see how this configuration is very little, right? And then we're going to go to the ponger and we're going to do the same. So let's comment this out. I'm going to come back to pinger. I'm going to copy about yay much, place it over here, make sure that I import everything that I need. I'm going to come back and the ping that I'm publishing over here, I'm going to take the pings queue and replace it over here. Let's open up the terminal, go to the pinger, start the application. 
At this point, if we come back to Amazon, we're going to see that the pink SKU and pong SKU have been automatically created. Now, if you've never used cloud, please understand that I have my environment correctly set up in order for it to authenticate with a cloud provider. With that now set up, we are going to go over to the Ponger. We're going to .NET run. We can now come back to the application, go to the send endpoint, refresh, come back. And here we're going to see this behavior again, where the services are exchanging messages. However, now they're exchanging messages through these SQS queues. Just like MartinDB, it is absolutely amazing how easy it is to set this stuff up. But wait, there's more. When it comes to message processing systems, what's going to happen inside the handler, and let's actually go to the pinger for this, what's going to happen inside the handler is you're going to have a database and you're going to save stuff to that database. And here comes the legendary two-phase commit problem where you want to send something to a queue, you want to save something to the database. Let's see how easy it is to solve this. First of all, we're going to need a database. Wolverine has PostgreSQL uh, SQL server integrations. Uh, these work with Entity Framework Core. Again, I'm saying I just want to use MartinDB because I actually like it more than Entity Framework Core. So let's go ahead, add this to the pinger. This is where I'm going to implement my database stuff. With that now installed, uh, let's come back over here. On the options, uh, you can have services over here. And I can't remember what it was exactly. Add Martin. We're going to slap on a connection string and a database that I'm connected to right over here. Wolverine demo. Uh, let's place this over here. One thing that I need to call over here is integrate with Wolverine. Now with the two queues, the queue that we're listening to, we can use a inbox. So use durable inbox. If you're not familiar with what a durable inbox is, essentially when you're reading from a message queue, you get a message, then you need to acknowledge that message that you have read it or you have processed it. That actually removes it from the queue in the cloud. Now, what can happen is you can read the message, you can acknowledge it, and then your application crashed, and then nothing is basically going to happen with that message. Information is lost. A durable inbox is you read in a message, you save it to the database, you acknowledge it, and now you're retaining the message locally and then the message gets processed. This is the same problem for which you have the outbox. So use durable outbox for when we're sending messages. Again, because in our handler, we're going to save something to the database. So the Martin DB context looks like this. So I document session, we're going to have a session. And in this session, Perhaps I want to store every single pong that I'm receiving. I will actually want to record it. So public class pong record. So the pong record will look something like this. We are going to store new pong record. The ID should be generated automatically and then the message over here. So storing is kind of like add. Nothing actually happens. What we want to do is call session save changes async. Well, I'll wait on this. And now we're sending stuff off and we're saving to the database. What you need to understand at this point is that before this was just sending it to the queue that it was meant to go to. Now it's not going to send it off to a queue. It's going to persist it to a database at the point of calling save changes async. Additionally, you can have a transactional attribute to have this be performed in a transaction. Now, one thing that I have forgot in order for Martin to automatically provision the database for the inbox and the outbox, and I think it works the same for entity framework, you want to say use a record setup on startup right over here. So you're chaining this on the iHost builder. Now, if you've never used Martin and you're asking, look, this thing that you're going to be storing in the database, don't you need the migrations for it? And the answer is no. Martin basically auto creates the tables for you. All you need to do is set up a database. So here I have the PostgreSQL database and nothing is there. If I go ahead and restart the pinger, and after restarting, if I come back to the database, we're going to see three tables being auto created by Wolverine using Martin. If we come back to the browser and I send another message, we come back over here because I'm saving the message this time in the database, we're going to get some additional tables and let's take a look at this. Select 
data from empty dog pong records, semicolon on the end. Here are all of the messages that have been generated and now are saved in the database. Now the incoming and outgoing envelopes, if we select everything from there, it is actually going to be empty and if you want to see stuff be saved here because all of the messages in here are temporal you save something to the database as soon as you send it to the queue it gets removed from there so if i come back over here i go to the queue and the pings queue let me double check that this is the correct queue over here so i'm sending to the pings queue so this is outbox that's where we're going to be seeing the aggregation of messages let me just copy the message i'm gonna confirm delete over here I'm gonna go to send, I'm gonna refresh. We're gonna take a look at the console and essentially it's trying to send to the queue. It's automatically retry sending it, but nothing is happening, right? Because the queue is no longer there. If we select again from the outbox here, we're gonna see the encoded message. This is essentially in its byte form. If we back out from here, come back to the logs of the application, as you can see when it originally actually provisioned the queue automatically, right now it is uh, struggling with recreating it, right? So if I refresh, the queue is not being recreated. So let's go ahead and give it a hand. We're gonna create the ping queue, all the default settings, we're gonna create it. If we come back to the application, we'll see that unfortunately right now it is still failing to reconnect to it. If we stop and start it again, it will successfully reconnect to the queue, resubmit the message and reprocess it. So now if we come back to the database, we take a look at this table again. Uh, this is basically the power of the outbox. At some point, the message that was stored in there, which was failed to be delivered at some point, will be re-delivered and then again processed. So again, if we take a look at the database and we take a look at the previous table, we're gonna see those additional messages now being stored as well. So with that, let's round up. If you've never worked on message buses before or distributed systems, you might take a look at this and you're like, oh yeah, it looks pretty cool. If you worked on distributed message systems before and you take a look at this and you're like, holy camoly, how much things I need to set up? Just this, only this and it works? It does what for me? I'll tell you right now, Wolverine has one heck of a bang for its buck. However, don't forget, it is still early days. Wolverine is just being released. It is still not, I think, in version one. It's like 0.0, .0 something. And already it is proving to be quite powerful. If you've never worked with a message distributed systems or you've not touched a cloud provider, I would say this is your chance. Go ahead, download Wolverine, have a go at it. You'll be amazed at how easy it is to get started and how much legwork Wolverine puts in for you. But this will be it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. If you would like the source code for this video as well as my other videos, please come support me on my Patreon. Your help will be greatly appreciated. A very big and special thank you to my current Patreon supporters. You help me make this content. As always, thank you for watching and have a good day.